Hi there, I'm Zach. And I'm Amanda. And we are going to show you your installation of Genstone from the moment you receive your boxes to the moment you finish your project. All right, so we've got our boxes in here. The first thing that we recommend doing is inventorying all your boxes and making sure that you received everything that you ordered and that nothing was missed. Um, another reason we recommend inventorying right away is to make sure that nothing was broken in shipment. It doesn't happen often, but if so, let us know and we'll get replacements out to you right away. We also recommend you let your panels acclimate for 48 hours, preferably of days with consecutive temperature. All right, so now we're about to get started on install. You will have received your post-purchase guide by now. Uh, what we recommend doing is printing out the install PDF that's available in there. That way you've got it on hand while you're installing to reference. Uh, we also recommend watching this video along with our many other install videos we have available. And of course, if you work with a project coordinator, feel free to call them for any specific questions you have. We're here to help. In your installation guide, you will find a detailed list of what materials you need to help you out with installation. We've got them all laid out here, except for our saws, which are actually waiting for us outside. When you're finally ready to begin installation of your genstone, we always recommend beginning with the corners. That is because, as you can see, they are pre-staggered. There's a long side and a short side here that helps you avoid seams long term on your project. Essentially what I've done so far is begun to dry fit the panels. The reason for that being our panels will come with different numbers in the corner here. You see the number one. We've got four different molding patterns with two from our uh, inside and outside corners. Uh, that is going to help you kind of delineate what looks good together and what doesn't look good together. For example, a four next to a four, they'll be painted differently, but they'll be from the same mold. So you might want to switch it up, put a one with a three, really sit down with the project, plan it out, and decide what looks really nice. Also something to keep in mind, you want to level even with your project area rather than with the floor. Again, this just helps by the time you're at the top of your project to avoid seams. Next up, we're gonna adhere our trim. The reason for that being, on most projects, you're gonna have an existing trim or an end wall that you're gonna be butting up to. As you can see, we do not have that, so we just wanna frame out and know how much we need to cut our panels to fill in between this trim and our corners over here. Essentially what I'm doing here is I'm continuing to dry fit my pieces. As I mentioned, we put the trim on so I know how much panel I need to cut off to fit in between the inside corner and that trim right there. I've got it marked where I need to make my cut and let's head outside to the saws and make that happen. So as you can see, we have our PPE equipped here. We've got our panel clearly marked and I'm standing in front of the table saw so we're gonna get into this panel here. Another thing you want to make sure you take into account is going to be the width of your lines as well as the width of your blade. When you begin installing your full panels, you're going to want to make sure you're driving a screw into your substrate about every 8 inches along the shiplap here. Let's see how it's done. Next we're going to install our corners going all the way up here. That way we can get a basis and idea of where to measure and cut our panels to fill in the gaps.
something that we did in between these inside corners that we're going to highlight now as we start to install our panels is we're going to run a bead of caulk in between on the shiplap here, basically along this whole line. All right, so we've got our corners installed here. Next up, we're gonna continue to measure these gaps to make sure that we cut the panels to fit. Go outside and mark them. So as you can see, I have removed the trim here. That's just really so I can slide these panels in a little bit easier. Either way, you're gonna get the same effect. One thing I'd like to point out, we are gonna be using our return pieces at the edge of this wall. Those are our finished edge pieces. They come in the standard size of a 12 by 12. Uh, one thing that you wanna make sure to do, since these are not pre-staggered, is you're gonna to wanna to stagger every other row. So in this instance, we are gonna cut off, sack here, there's the 12 inches. We're gonna cut off about three or four inches here. That way they're staggered. So the return piece that I have here right now is actually going to go into this spot. The reason I have it marked, and as you saw, I scored it, is to recreate that shiplap area so that I can make sure that these panels fit nice and tightly together.
So right now we've got all of the screws into our shiplaps of the panels. Now we're gonna put a couple face screws where there's any flex. What you wanna try to do with the face screw is really hide it underneath a rock. So for this one, for example, we're gonna plan to put our first face screw, we're gonna tuck it up and right in there, and then we'll fill it in with the color match caulking, which we'll show you later. Okay, so when you've got all your install almost finished here, what we're going through and doing is placing face screws in these panels. You've got to be sure to check for any flex. So that just means that because it's screwed into the top, that bottom isn't quite as tightly adhered there. So I'm going to drive a couple screws through to make sure that's secure. All we have left at this point is the ledger and the trim. So I've already made a couple cuts just to practice, but here I go cutting the trim and ledger down to size. Okay, so the wall is finished. That said, as you can see, we do have a couple exposed screw heads here. What we're gonna do is take our exact color match caulking and go back through here, cover these, and then paint them, and we'll show you just how to do it. Final step of our interior wall here, I'm gonna show you how to do your touch-up kit, which is essentially the paint that comes along with your order as well as the exact color match caulking. So as you can see, I've chosen the ledger color to go ahead and just show you what I'm doing here. Uh, but you're gonna pour that into this bowl, I'm gonna mix up the caulk, and then we're gonna go in and touch it up. So the exact color match caulking does come with the syringe. You wanna get it up to about 30 milliliters on that fill mark. So we've got our paint in the syringe. What we're gonna do now is mix the exact color caulking with the paint. And it can get a little messy, so you probably do wanna have paper towels on standby. After you add that paint, you wanna give it a good shake for about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, really to make sure that the paint spreads throughout the caulk here and tints the whole thing. After you give it a good shake, you wanna grab your thickening agent to put at the top here. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I've cut the top off of the thickening agent, basically same entry as the paint. Squeeze the whole bottle into there. And you're gonna give it a good shake for another minute, minute and a half. Then you're actually gonna let it sit for about a half an hour so it can thicken up. And now this cap came with this exact color match. So what we're gonna do, take this off, put this on, put it in the caulking gun, and then start on the wall. And as you can see, it comes out a little bit lighter, but it will dry to match. Aside from any exposed screw heads, something else you want to keep an eye out is these exposed edges after you've made a cut. So you can go back in there with like a paint uh, brush or something like that. I'm going to caulk it first and then we can come back in and touch that up with the paint to match it.
much for watching. If you have any specific or additional install questions, feel free to give us a call at the number below. Also, if you're looking to get a project started, but have questions like how much genstone do I need, or even ideas about your project, please do give us a call. These project coordinators will be happy to help you out.